Tree, creating a welcoming yeah mm -hmm. creating a welcoming <laughs> creating a welcoming space <laughs> creating a welcoming space for Hi, welcome back to Humble Homemaking. This is episode six of the Homemaking for Dummies series. If you are new to this series and this is the first video that you clicked on, I will link the entire playlist for the series up above and down below. This series is all about homemaking tips for the aspiring homemaker, the new homemaker, or the seasoned homemaker. And of course, if you're not a homemaker, don't feel left out. You can totally take these tips and apply them to your life as well. Create a welcoming space for your family and your guests. You don't have to have it perfect in order to, for it to feel welcoming and warm. I like to throw out a few throw blankets. I like to have more ambient lighting from candles when guests come over because not only does it make it look pretty, but it makes it smell pretty as well. I always try to have something to snack on when I'm expecting guests such as homemade bread or homemade pretzel or cookies or something of the like. Wow, and then I also like to seasonally decorate. Right now my house is pretty bare because we are going through a decluttering phase. So right now I don't have very much behind me to show you what I'm talking about. But on these windows actually right here we have little paper snowflakes that my son and I made. And then I have a wreath on my front door that's winter themed. I go with certain colors for the seasons. So in the winter I like dark blues and reds. And then in the springtime I like my pastels. In the summer I like my brighter, cleaner colors like whites and light grays and yellows, vivid colors. And then in the fall, of course, I like my oranges, my muted tones for my house. So seasonally decorating helps a guest feel like this house is being lived in, not really just like perfect all the time. You don't want your guests to come in and be afraid to sit down on your couch or afraid to lean against a pillow because that's a decorative pillow and you don't want anybody touching it. You want it to feel welcome. You don't want to scold your husband for not being able to use a pillow. In my house, everything, including the decorative pillows, are all usable. They are all able to be laid on or thrown around. I try not to have anything that's just for decoration in a place that is supposed to feel comfortable, such as the couch or on the beds. It's little things that make people feel welcome at your house. It could be uh, the wreath on the door, maybe a mat on the porch that says welcome. The smells in households make people feel welcome. Then of course your attitude in the house makes people feel welcome. If you have a bad attitude when people come over, people are going to sense that. Your family is going to sense that. Your guests are going to sense that. And they're not gonna feel comfortable around you or in your house. So make sure you have a welcoming attitude as well as a welcoming environment. So creating a welcoming space brings me to the next point, which is to remember the art of hospitality. Be a hospitable host. That Feminine Housewife has a really good video on hospitality that I will link above and below. These tips in her video give a really detailed explanation and examples. People seem to have lost the art of hospitality. For the holidays and any other type of event, I jump on the opportunity to be the host because one, I don't have a lot of family out here, so every opportunity I have to spend with people that I care about out here, I will take it because back at home in Michigan, my family has some of the best hosts for things ever <laughs> and I might be a little biased but I love my family's hosting skills it's just something that I would like to continue because like I said it is an art it's just so nice to host people and host events and host things so next time somebody says whose house are we going to have this holiday at jump on that opportunity and do it because it's just so much fun to host and it's just it's a learning curve of course but every single event and holiday that I host I get better and better at, at it each time so host the next tip is to organize one area at a time so if you are starting from the beginning of the beginning with homemaking or if you have kind of let things go a little bit around the house start organizing one area of your house or if you still live at home one area of your room at a time start organizing your closet or organize your dresser drawers or organize your makeup products and hair products 
Figure out ways to organize things that are best for you. I am not perfect when it comes to organizing. I've gotten a lot better at organizing my household with certain things like baskets from the dollar store, plastic totes for seasonal items. The next organization task that I'm going to hit after this video actually is the front closet in my living room. That's the closet where things just get kind of thrown in there and they don't get put back properly. So I'm just gonna go in there and reorganize it and make it look neat and nice and easy to grab things off of the shelves. Do not overwhelm yourself with reorganizing your entire house in one day. Take the time to do one room at a time or one area of your house at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. And once you get everything organized, do your best to stick to it. And if you are like me and things sometimes don't get put back properly or sometimes they just get moved around, shuffled around a bit. Make it an effort to, when you're cleaning that room, once a week, reorganize things, move things around. With organization, you have to learn the art of decluttering. So decluttering and donating have to come before organization. So the next tip is to declutter and donate what you no longer use or love. So. I have a lot of extra silverware and I don't need as much silverware as I have. So that is something that I have cleaned out and I am donating a lot of the excess forks and knives and spoons that I have because I just don't need that many. With going into each area that you are trying to organize, take the steps to declutter and donate what you don't use. Get rid of what you don't use. This is just creating dust and things that you just you don't need sitting around your house. The more clutter there is, the less tidy and clean your home feels. And I'm not saying you have to donate and get rid of all of your sentimental things because they sit on the shelves and you don't use them. No, but if something is just absolutely not being used and you don't love it, get rid of it. Beautiful. Think about it like this. If you are a thrifter like me and you go to the thrift store and you pick something out that you're like, why did they donate this? I love this. That feeling, they donated it because they no longer used it or loved it. And you loved it. You picked it up and you took it home and you loved it. So same for the items around your house. If you are not using it or loving it, get rid of it because somebody else is going to find that item at the thrift store or find that item on an online shopping site and buy it and love it, okay? And so there's online thrift stores. There's ThreadUp. There's Mercari. There is... What's the other one? I can't think of it, but I'll put it right here because it's like the most popular one. It's Facebook Marketplace, obviously Craigslist, which is you know, a little sketch. There's all sorts of things that you can do to get rid of things, maybe make a little bit of money, help somebody out, and get your house in order a little bit easier and get your house organized a little bit easier. The next thing is to learn to be more frugal. I was always frugal, but becoming a homemaker, I have taken my frugality to a whole new level. Cloth diapering, I make my own dishwasher detergent, I make my own laundry soap, I make my own disinfectant sprays, all-purpose cleaners, vinegar, room sprays, so soaps, sewing, all sorts of things. Thrifting, obviously. All, um, my son's playing the piano for us. Not only does being frugal save money, but it also helps the environment, okay? I'm not throwing disposable <laughs> diapers away because I'm using cloth diapers. I'm not buying bottles and bottles of laundry soap because I am buying supplies every few months to basically make months worth or even years worth of laundry soap and dishwasher detergents. So if I can do something to save money and help the environment and have something be a little bit better for my health, in return, I am going to do it. I don't care if I'm not buying the latest and greatest clothing items. I don't care if I'm not buying the laundry soap that smells like floral, blah, blah, blah. I prefer to do it this way because it is teaching me how to be self-sufficient and take care of things without having to depend on buying things all the time. We are now at the end of the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, subscribe, and share. As I reach 500 subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway on this channel. I promise it will be a good one. So help me out and help me get to 500. I will see you next time. Bye! -bye.